Hey, welcome back. It's Zach from HowChew.com. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own Super Gamepad Zero. The Super Gamepad Zero is a Raspberry Pi retro gaming rig inside of an original Super Nintendo controller. Simply connect it to any TV or monitor and you're good to go. The Super Gamepad Zero is a DIY all-in-one retro gaming system. Using RetroPie, we'll be able to play thousands of our favorite retro games. Now, some of you may remember the original GamePad Zero was a Raspberry Pi computer and an NES controller. Now, the problem is that you're limited in which games you can play because most games require more buttons. That's why the most popular style controller for RetroPie is like the SNES controller. Um, it has shoulder buttons and it has uh, these four and a D-pad. So uh, the Super GamePad Zero, we're gonna take the same concept as the original GamePad Zero, but instead we 3D printed a bottom for the SNES controller that a Raspberry Pi Zero computer will fit into. So it's the same concept, um, but with more buttons and a little more space and a little more ergonomic. So then we'll take the original controller's printed circuit board or PCB, and we'll solder it directly to this header here so everything will be self-contained. Now for this project, you will need a soldering iron, um, and ideally you'll have a 3D printer, but you don't actually need one. There are a lot of other ways to get your model printed if you don't have a 3D printer. So you can use an online 3D printing service like Sculptio, where you just upload your model and pay them and they ship it to you. You can also look for a local hackerspace or makerspace, and usually they have open make nights where you can just pop in and use the equipment without needing a membership. You can also check your local library. Most of them have 3D printers now that the public can use. You can also check Craigslist. People advertise printing services on Craigslist all the time. You just send them the file and then meet up with them and give them some cash and they'll give you the uh, model. And another option, of course, though this isn't an option for everyone, is to just buy a 3D printer. So in, in the last few years, they've come way down in price. I picked up my Ender 3 for $179 on GearBest, and a lot of people don't realize just how inexpensive 3D printing has gotten. So if you uh, have the cash, you know, go ahead and pull the trigger and just pick one up. 3D printers are incredibly useful. The total materials for this project cost between $50 and $75, including the original SNES controller. You can also use an aftermarket controller, but honestly, uh, the, the wiring diagram is different and the colors are different and the circuit board itself is different, so I can't guarantee that it'll work just as well. So I actually had a third one of these lying around, and of course you only need two for the SNES. So you can buy a used controller on eBay pretty cheap. Now, the project takes about an hour to complete from start to finish as far as assembling the controller and soldering it and installing RetroPie. Um, the, the model itself took about six hours to print, but of course you can do other things while it's printing. Well, the first thing you're gonna do obviously is print the model itself. Um, I found some filaments that's about the same color and I linked to it in the uh, full guide in the video description. See, for the GamePad Zero, I had this gray that didn't really match up. So um, I was able to find this filament that worked perfectly this time. Now this model comes courtesy of Thingiverse from designer Sigmund Zero, and I link to it again in the video description. So um, this is based on the original GamePad Zero model made by B. Fesser. If you're interested in the print settings that I used, um, I used a 0.2 quality, 15% infill, and then I printed with supports. It's important to print this with a brim adhesion, which basically means that it's going to print like six or eight lines around the outside of the controller, and that way it doesn't get like twisted slightly when it's printing and if it you know got out of shape then it wouldn't fit into the original controller housing anymore so it's important to use a brim adhesion and then when you're done you just kind of break it off uh, make sure you print with supports because this there's this big overhang here and then otherwise just print it just like this first thing you're gonna do after printing the model is clean it up a bit and you can do this with just a normal box cutter just kind of like you know scrape things off and make it nice and clean you can also use sandpaper which is a great idea now, before we actually assemble the controller, you can go ahead and install RetroPie now. It'll be easier to do that than to do it later. So um, I wrote a separate guide on this, which again is linked in the video description. It's kind of a step-by-step -step process. It's not difficult, but it's probably easier to do it now, and that way you can test it and make sure it's working in case you screw up any of the soldering points. You'll know that an issue is not related to the RetroPie installation itself. 
Now for the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and disassemble the old controller, and to do that you just need a small Phillips head screwdriver. Nintendo didn't use any security screws on this one, luckily. So just remove the five screws on the back. And here's a little pro tip. Always have some sort of project or screw enclosure to put all your screws in so they don't get lost. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fully disassemble the controller so that we can clean it because there are years of nasty stranger grease and skin flakes and hairs and Cheeto crumbs in here. I actually already cleaned this one while I was writing the normal photo-based version of this guide, but usually there'd be like a lot of gunk in here. Now to clean it, you can use just rubbing alcohol on a paper towel or Q-tips, or you can actually just take this, the housing once you take everything out and put it in the sink and use a scrub brush and some dish soap and that'll clean it like really fast. Okay, so we're gonna remove the original controller board and then take all the buttons and, and dump them out. Now there are two little metal pins in here that hold the shoulder buttons. So make sure you don't lose these or else the entire controller is useless. So I'm gonna put these with my screws. And I always keep like an empty enclosure handy for all little buttons and parts with any project and that way I can drop this. Like, There's no way I'm gonna lose a part. And don't worry about the order, um, remembering where they go, because as I'll show you later, Nintendo was awesome and they labeled exactly which buttons go where. And they're also all keyed with like a little slot so that you can't put them in wrong, which is pretty great. Now here's a quick rundown of how this project's gonna work. We're gonna take this little $10 Raspberry Pi Zero W, which has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. And we're basically going to solder this cable directly to the GPIO header. And then we're gonna program the uh, computer to see this as just a normal controller like if you plugged in a USB controller. So with the original GamePad Zero, the printed circuit board wires had to be soldered directly to the Pi and it was kind of a mess. But what's really cool about the Super Nintendo controller is there's actually this little connector here that comes out. So this is going to make it much easier to work on because we can essentially just solder this cable to the Raspberry Pi and then we can just plug it in when we're ready. So go ahead and carefully remove this connector. And then we're going to want to cut about five inches of the cable. We don't want too much because then there's not going to be a lot of space in there. And you also don't want it to be too short. So I'm going to cut about five inches. And then carefully remove the cable jacket without clipping the wires. All right, so inside the cable jacket, you'll see a couple of wires, uh, some paper, and then some strength filament. Or they just basically put like string in here so that if you yank the controller, it's not gonna stretch the wires out, which is kind of cool. That's why these controllers were so resilient. It's similar to the Airman yarn, or also known as Kevlar, that they put inside of fiber optic cables to keep them from being pulled and damaged. So you can imagine the glass wouldn't stretch, it would just break. All right, so use whatever wire strippers you have at your disposal to strip these wires. They're very small, so just be careful not to rip the whole wires out. I guess these uh, wire strippers are just too big. Now, if your wire strippers are too big, which chances are they are, um, this is like a 22 or 24 gauge wire, I think. It's pretty small. And you can kind of just angle it and then pull. Try not to strip off a bunch of the, uh, the conductor. Okay, so all your wires are stripped. That might actually be the biggest pain in the ass part of this project because they're so small. We're going to go ahead and solder them to the Raspberry Pi's um, GPIO header here. So use the diagram on your screen to match them up. This is different than the pinout for the original GamePad Zero. Um, the, I believe the yellow and red wires are switched. Now it might be easier to just do these one at a time and then solder them so that they'll stay in place. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and mount the Pi in the controller housing. And to do this, I'm going to use four 5mm screws, which uh, I got off McMaster Car, but you can also get them on Amazon. I almost forgot to put my micro SD card in. All right, nice and secure. And now you can see that you can access the uh, power port, a USB port, and the HDMI port on the back. So now we're going to go ahead and reassemble the original controller, the front part, by putting all the buttons back in and everything. So like I said earlier, don't worry about orientation. You can actually, you probably can't see it there, but um, it's actually labeled lavender and uh, purple. So... Um, you really can't put these in wrong. And even if you try, there's little like notches on each one. All four of them are different. Okay, to reconnect the shoulder buttons, you'll take these little uh, nipple looking things. Sorry, I really can't think of anything else that they look like. 
Take your two metal pins, and these go into these little top area here. You'll see at the top there's like two little holes. And then take your triggers, or shoulder buttons rather, and remember right, they're, they're not reversible, they're labeled. So uh, put the right one over here, and the left one over here. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our board back. So the controller is effectively back together. Now we wanna carefully connect our cable. And there's a little notch on it and the notch needs to go down and just slide that cable back in place. There are two little holes at the top of the 3D printed enclosure and then these pins need to fit into. So you should be able to put it back together just like you did the original one. Be careful not to rip these wires out, okay? They're very fragile, they're very thin. All right, so that's back together. That's awesome. Make sure all your buttons work and they're seated and nothing is out of place. And then we're gonna take our original screws and we're gonna reuse those. This time there are only four holes. Now one thing I did forget to mention is I recommend using a heat sink and I'm gonna pull this apart and put one in um, when I'm done with this video. But you're gonna to wanna to use a very narrow heat sink because only certain ones will fit and you might have to offset it slightly. So uh, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just set it on top of the board before you put it back together and then try putting the case back together and see if it gets stuck. And if it does, just kind of move it over a little bit. But you're gonna to wanna to use a thin one. This is a copper heat sink I had lying around. Aluminum's fine. Um, arguably, aluminum works better. Uh, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you just don't use a really tall one. So you're gonna want one of these for playing more uh, intensive games. Now we made a lot of Raspberry Pi, Retro Pi controller type projects. Um, and a lot of people like to put weights in them just to make it feel heavier, which is definitely a nice approach. So you can buy a little weights or just get some like fishing weights and just kind of like hot glue them in or super glue them in. Just make sure they're not gonna rattle around and short the board out. Um, but some people like to do that to give it a little more heft. Um, this case is definitely thicker than the original one, but it's actually really, really comfortable to hold. So this guy did a good job designing the model. Um, I might sand down these corners a little more because the brim that I cut off is still kind of like pointy. So I'll take a little bit of sandpaper later and round them off just like the original controller. Now here's a quick comparison of the Super Gamepad Zero versus the Gamepad Zero um, for no reason. Now that the hardware is done, we'll do the last little bit of setup that we need to do to get it to detect this board as like a normal controller that you plug in. All right, now it's time to boot up the Super Gamepad Zero. First, we're gonna to wanna to connect our HDMI cable to our monitor or TV. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi Zero that's in this thing features a mini HDMI port, which is a smaller version of a normal HDMI port. I recommend using a long mini HDMI to HDMI cable, but if you already have an HDMI cable you plan to use, then you'll need to use an adapter. All right, after you've connected to your monitor, go ahead and connect power. So you're gonna take your micro USB cable and AC adapter and plug it directly into the back of the Zero. Now there are actually two different ports that look identical on the back here. One is for data, which is for like the controllers that you might want to plug in or for adding ROMs. Uh, the other one is the actual power port. So you want to connect it to the one that's furthest from the HDMI port. All right, so to get RetroPie to recognize the Super Gamepad Zero as a normal USB controller, we'll need to do a small amount of configuration. So connect a USB keyboard or USB gamepad to the Super Gamepad Zero and navigate to RetroPie setup, manage packages, manage driver packages, in the RetroPie menu. So select the option that has GameCon driver next to it. It might be 813, but sometimes the number changes for newer versions of RetroPie. Go ahead and install it from binary, accept the firmware warning, wait for everything to install. Finally, exit the setup menu. All right, now the last thing we need to do to configure our controller is to connect to your Raspberry Pi using SSH and run the following command. Now obviously you're not gonna type this off your screen, so I recommend checking out the full guide in the video description and then scroll down to the step and you'll see step-by-step uh, -step how to do it. Um, now while your Pi is rebooting, unplug the USB controller or keyboard and you'll see a configuration menu for the SNES controller itself. And this is where you'll configure the Super Gamepad Zero, you know, as uh, which buttons you wanna use, A, B, etc. If you don't see the configuration menu, don't panic. Just reconnect your keyboard or USB controller and use it to navigate to start, configure input, and then use your gamepad zero to fill out the confirmation at options. Now what happens if you wanna play with a friend? Well, this is one controller, but you can also connect a second USB controller or use a Bluetooth controller. You can actually use several controllers if you're using Bluetooth so that you can do multiplayer action. 
And there you have it. So check out the link to the full guide in the video description if you want to, you know, more information on how to complete this project. There's like a, literally a text and photo based version of the guide in there as well as some photos and helpful links and stuff. Um, if you have any trouble or questions or comments, uh, just, you know, go ahead and leave it in the video comments area. Um, be sure to subscribe. We do cool projects like this all the time. And if you check out our channel, you'll find a few just like this um, right now. And as always, thank you very much for watching.